Okay. Well, welcome to the clinical orientation for Nursing 361. And um, my name is Barbara Mori. I'm sure some of, I know all of you have had me in 310. And this is Dr. Leslie Harris, who will be the clinical instructor for um, the second section. And the reason we have two clinical instructors like this is for accreditation. Because when accreditation looks at us, I cannot have 21 students as being the only clinical instructor <laughs> for the course. So I will do all the didactic portion of the classroom, which means I'm doing the grading for discussion board, for your exams, um, the culturally competency uh, that you will have to go on and send me the, uh, that you've done it. That's all my part. Where you look in your syllabus, which it will point out when I go through the syllabus, anything that's uh, designated community project, Dr. Harris will be correcting those papers if you have her as the clinical instructor. Otherwise, I will also be uh, correcting <coughs> those papers too for the students I have. And I'm sure you saw in week one who you have in the United States. Also here is Cynthia Hunt, who is a, one of our right arm people. She's the a librarian, the embedded librarian. How many have had uh, use of Cynthia in the past with the embedded library? So now you can also put a f p face to the Name. She's real. She's not an avatar. <laughs> but what we're also going to show you why she's here is because she has beautifully set, set up a way you could go through the library into my course, into all the links to Healthy People 2020 and everything else. So I'm going to let her take over the first part so then she could leave and then I'll go through the syllabus. So you're on, hey. Cynthia. Hello, everyone. When you're on the library's website, the easiest way to get to the research starters is to click on the research starters tab, and then you're going to view the research, research starters by subjects. Scroll all the way down and find the RN to BSN. And then you're going to look for the 361. Public and community. Yeah, public and community. So this research starter will be, be your guide. As the professor mentioned, it will provide you with links right to Healthy 2020. It will provide you links to ebooks, articles, databases that we recommend that you search for articles, um, journals, and, and so forth. So it's a great resource. You'll have access to it when you're on campus as well as when you're off campus. You do not need to log in any special way. When you're off campus to log into the individual databases, it's simply going to be your Blackboard ID and password. And when you're in your Blackboard course, you should be able to link right into the databases. Um, if it asks you for a pass username and password, it's just your Blackboard ID and, and your password. You want to go through this now, right? Yeah. Also, on the, in this um, research starter, there's a link to the APA style because for your paper, you have to cite an APA. How do you guys feel about that? Familiar with it? And this is something that's embedded, you know, you can use it in every course through the library. So APA Style Central, if you haven't created an account, how, is this new for, no, this is about the, either third or fourth course in the program we take. Okay. So important thing is you want to make sure that you are using Google, Chrome, or Firefox, just like when you're in Blackboard. Do not use Internet Explorer, and it'll work very nicely. The Learn and the Write tabs will be your friend. The Learn tab will provide you tutorials. So if you're citing something like a personal interview, if you're citing anything from Healthy People 2020, this will help you format that correctly because those are sometimes um, can be seen as being obscure uh, resources. And also, actually, when you are in your Blackboard course, there is a new content with the librarian resources. And when you click on that, it'll bring you to the research starters link as well. So you have direct access when you're in um, your Blackboard, as well as some um, tutorials to assist you with your, with your search. And of course, there's the Ask Library Discussion Board. So you have any questions regarding your research when it comes to citing, keywords, narrowing down your focus, broadening your search, um, you can post a question to the Discussion Board, you can email me directly, or use the Ask Library um, on the library's website. 
do know that when you do ask questions in the librarian, they are only here basically when the college is open. Yes. We don't, it's not like a 24 hour type of uh, feedback. So if you post a question at nine o'clock at night, you might not get an answer till nine o'clock the next morning or so. Mm -hmm. So you kind of give everybody at least 24 hours, but there's no direct help, immediate help. So <clears throat> can we go back to just the Healthy People 2020 site? So when you see this, you're going to go into top because one of your first in your journal that's prop due this coming Sunday by midnight, you're going to have to pick a topic, a population, and an area that you're going to be doing it on. And I'll talk a little more about that. So if you want to know what you know passion and what it all is you can go into sorry yeah go, it's kind of blurry I can't see too good so here you'll see all the goal the overview so say diabetes so this is what you want you should kind of scroll through read through what is healthy people 20, 2020 perspectives on that topic what is the goal for 2020 that they want for the population because this is all part of your research base that you're going to start your project with because we can never build a project unless we know why it's a problem type of thing. So you could go into that, you could go into objectives, there's interventions, resources. So even in this course alone, these are there all tons of them on here so you could see, but um, and then it'll even show disparities on race and ethnic. So say if you wanted to do diabetes on uh, the um, young adolescents that are African American or Hispanic or something, you might even pull that up and it might say what are the disparities, why why is there more um, African Americans like opposed to Chinese, you know, culture or something like that. So that was a, it's a very good website. Also, resources, I want to show I told you. <laughs> Gentle touch. Gentle touch. Right there. So here they'll also give you some also uh, articles that you can research on. So there'll be articles that on that specific topic. So you can scroll through that, pick which ones you want. You know, say you wanted a project to do more exercise because they just well, so you <laughs> it's engaging community health workers. Well, can you go back for one. Go back there. for patients with so here you wanted to do for one of your projects you want to develop an exercise plan for you know. so here they can give you a nice article about it what is all the you know review different types of things so it's a source that you don't have to kind of play around for hours on the internet finding uh, material on your topic so everything is right in there so that link where it says the R and BSN and then you go to public and community health you can scroll through a lot of things with that so we'd like to be able to show you that you don't have to spend thousands of hours researching articles and things like that to get a baseline. Okay. That book. And this is all right through the library, which is very, very nice. Um, you know, leading topics and objectives. So here, if you don't know what you want to do, because I always say go to a passion, go to something you love. This is a lot of your articles that are on there, what deals with it, but go into this specific because then it worked. It'll all show you tons of stuff. What are immunizations, this types of thing, what are the infectious diseases? And you could then even go into interventions, research objectives, and then it'll come even break it down for you more. So on different immunizations, different uh, infections, types of things. So you know, it's going to take a little while for you to play around and get familiar with this site because it's a huge site with a lot of information. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm using you as. I'm here being annoyed. You know. So here, you know, I mean, a lot of different things on here. So that's all under topics and objectives A through Z, but. <clears throat> 
nutrition weight status overview. You know, and you could even pick to really, and this is where our part comes in after your journal taking, because we might have you say, well, that's broad, let's narrow it down a little bit. So you could see increase the proportion of school districts that require schools to make fruits or vegetables available. You might want to just pick that one objective as part of your project. And then hit on the plus mark there. Right Which next to right this where one. your hand is. Yeah. So it gives you even baseline target, what the target for Healthy People 2020 is. So hopefully by 2020 it will be all this. And the related, related research articles. is right there. So that's why I said, you know, you can see that topic, but go into it and then pick an objective because that's going to really narrow it down for what you want to do. This, this project that we're asking for you is not going to cure the report. <laughs> but it might be in that one little area that will help to make more awareness or something. Okay. When you come to an article in um, PubMed, because that's not, um, it's your National Library of Medicine, so it's a separate database that we have available in the library, anything that's not full text, we can get for, to you for, for free. All you would have to do is fill out the library loan um, article form, fill in the title, the author, the year, all the publication information, Depend upon when you request it, it can take anywhere between 24 hours and one week for that institution to email us the article. So that's always an option as well. Any questions on how to search possibly for your health project? Could I just say, so if we just quickly went around the room as quick, and it would be as quick as this, just to give everybody an idea, what, would be a passion if you just said something we can just practice a little bit just to show you so what would be a passion or something that you would be wanting to explore in the community um, definitely the health and fitness with weight control okay so you saw how easy that was so but we've got here how so if you wanted to switch it out you've got health health communication, you've got the nutrition and weight status, there's different categories mm -hmm. that you could narrow it down. Um, I'm so bad with names. I'm just going to point and I'm rude. So you could, you know. Uh, what would be definitely. another one? So nutrition, yeah. weight status, what's another th uh, something that you're interested in? You don't, if you don't have it, you don't have to. You don't have to. Know. Another like student. Access to services. Like access to okay. Care. Okay. Access to services. I think that there was something. We've got to go back to objectives. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Topics and objectives. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, uh, so access to health right services, here. A. Okay. And then if that isn't quite what you're looking for, but it does help you to narrow it down. Increase the number of primary care providers, increase the portion of persons have specific sources of ongoing care. So if it was a particular here. disease entity or something like that. And here would be like, like this divides the population variant, increase the proportion of children and youth ages 17 years and under. So see how it's small a little bit? It's little already bit. narrowed it down, down for you. you. So it would be certain things example. like that. For persons of persons who are unable to obtain or delay in obtaining necessary dental care, if you wanted to do just dental care. So it's very, very specific on a lot of their objectives. That would help you. So again, as you're exploring or you take that big idea that you have, you can go in here and search out different things. Daryl, do you have an idea? Um, I feel like a lot of heart disease. So. Okay, so cardiovascular disease, heart disease, I think that there's a few different areas. Yeah, heart disease is broad. I mean, really. Uh, so we have heart disease and stroke. Heart disease and stroke. Yeah, yeah that works. But you look at I want to just show you all the objectives. So it narrows. Wow. So it's <laughs> going to help you to <laughs> narrow. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Just kidding. <laughs> no, it's good because it breaks it down This is what you're you. going to go looking through, which one with your idea or what your passion is, suits probably. Okay. You know? Because if, you know, read it, you know, reduce hospitalization of adults 75 to 84 years old with near, with heart failure as uh, the principal diagnosis. Okay. Because so see how you, it's all 
very, it's almost like you're doing research on your subject right now. You guys all have taken research, right? Mm -hmm. So you know how research is, you know, you know, specific, certain areas are popular. This is what this helps you kind of focus in. And then we go out into the community and kind of like. Well, we're well, going to get to, we haven't gotten that far. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is just how to find, this is step one. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> what your passion is. Okay. Finding your passion, going through. And some students I've had at this time really don't have quite a passion yet. So that's why I say search this, look at it, see what's something. Think about what's in the, maybe what's in the family. What might be a genetic disease that you see a lot in family members if you're looking for some type of project or passion to do. Your genomics would your, be a good place to refer back to if right. you're not sure what is in your, in your family or mm -hmm. your etiology or something like that. Right, so again, you know, you could easily, you know, try to pick something. And that's again, call us, please. We don't know if you're having problems or stuck on something. If you don't, let us know. So call us, email us, let us know. Yes? Professor Murray, so I'm here this evening because I can't make a connection between how, I, I almost feel like we have to back into our passion based upon how our clinical is going to take place. Like, I can't get there from here. We're, we're going we'll to... We'll explain that to you. Okay. The first step that I really want you to do is try to find something you want to do. You know, you know, we, we all kind of have a little bit of a passion. You know, like I said, you know, something, you know, that we... It's of, a starting point. It's a start. You know, could it possibly change midway through the semester? Possibly, but I'll always say then it's going to be more work for you to have to do because then you got to start all over again. But we so let, when I go through the syllabus, I think it might help you a little bit more to understand what you need to do, okay? But we will brainstorm a little bit and... Yeah, uh, yeah. so can I, everybody understand? Can the, I understand? So you, the healthy people will help your life be easier. Any questions for Cynthia? Because I'm going to say she can go then. <laughs> um, again, if you have any questions, she's, she's great. She is, and she's right on the wall too. Even yeah. with two small little kids. <laughs> <laughs> there is a brochure on the table here about APA Style Essential, how to create an account, troubleshoot, and, and um, so forth. So we've never done that. And so please we'll, we'll pass reach out. To okay. So Any I'll other set. questions for library? No? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Then I will get out of this. I'll switch over on this side. I think it's easier. Thank you, Sue. All right. Where's my tab? There's too many tabs open. <laughs> oh, you are. There we go. No. Yes, that's you. Because well, Cynthia opened that. Well, I had, that. No, I had my syllabus all open already. Maybe it's this one. Maybe it's that one. <laughs> oh. Can I get the X? Yes. So just go back to your course. The little boy. There it is. Okay. So, okay. I'm not going to go through all this. We do do the readings from the book. Our textbook that we do, that your readings for the didactic portion of the class and everything, and where your tests, all your test questions will come from the book. They're all multiple choice questions, 50, pretty much like the same questions you had when you had me in pre tech okay? And you only have two, though, because there's more paper writing, you have a midterm and a final. But that's it. <clears throat> okay? I do recommend Purnell yet because you're going to be working with a lot of different cultures. So it's good to even with your project to refer back to it and add it into even your paper sometimes. So I'm not going to read you the goals, the course of your, and I'll read that. I'm going to, I think it's easier on this side. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about first right now is the population health project, okay? So we kind of started, this is going to be worth 55% of your grade, okay? All these different steps that you're going to have. So 
you all, again, know your clinical instructor, who they are, either Dr. Harris or myself. So the first thing is the journals. You're going to have five journals every two weeks. And there is a journal link. I don't know, have you gone into the weekly units to see that there is a, a link? The reason you are writing these journals is, number one, to keep track of your own hours. You know, it's not a clinical where you're going to go every Tuesday for eight hours a day. Because we all understand everybody's working. Everybody's working different shifts of hours. So you're going to be responsible for tallying your own clinical hours. So that by week five, or the journal five, excuse me, or the journal that you're going to send in on your paper on week 12 should tally for at least 45 hours. And 45 hours, the reason we chose that is because that is worth one credit. That's how you get the three credits in your courses and stuff. So clinical is 45 hours. In the journals is our way of seeing how you're doing, where you might need help, where we're going to say, yeah, this is a great topic, but it is going to be so broad that you're going to be inundated with material, with everything on how to do it, and, you know, where am I going to start, whatever. So this is where we're going to be writing back to you on those journals, because you're going to submit them through Blackboard, not Tastry. And on the column where we will grade you with them, we will give you feedback on it. Okay? So we will tell you, you know, this is great and everything. We like your population or your topic, but your population is huge. Or the area, like if somebody wants to do their project in Hartford. Hartford definitely is an inner city, but it's huge. It's got a lot of population. It's got a lot of different um, areas, you know. But I'm going to say pick one section. So if you go on a map of Hartford, you will see there's, I think there's like eight or nine sections designated as Hartford, and that's where you could get a lot of statistical information too. And I will give you some sites where you can get a lot of your statistical information, especially for your, your windshield survey. But, um, you know, we're going to say, well, maybe you want to do it in Frog Hollow. Maybe you want to do it in Little Italy, you know, for that section. Uh, some of the rural towns, like Tallinn, Coventry, uh, Terryville, they're small enough that you can handle one you know, one town itself. So, you know, again, that's the way we're going to help you. And if you have a question before that, please get call us, email us. You know, that's our role as instructors to help guide you through this. You know, I've been doing this for project for like a year and a half now with this course. So, you know, we definitely know. Dr. Harris has done it for a couple semesters, so she knows how to do this too. So, you know, we're here to get you in. Okay, so that's your journal. With that journal, you're going to pick, excuse me, you're going to pick the project and you're going to pick a population. And what I mean by a population, because now your patients are not one person. Okay, it's a population. So you might pick uh, the adolescents, like if you wanted to do adolescents, or somebody wanted to do elder, the cardiac disease in those over 65. And that would be a lot of broad. So you might even do 70 to 80. Now, is that you're going to need to get all the research on that? No, because some research might just be 65 and over research. But um, who's the population you're going to do it in? Are you going to do it all males? Are you going to do all females? You're going to do both. You know, are you going to do preschool children, uh, teenagers? Because remember, teenagers and things, those things are subpopulations. You know, alcoholics, male alcoholics or um, the elderly now, because there's going to be a big, big, big use with elderly and, you know, drugs. Or HIVs in the elderly. You know, things like that. So again, that's your, then you're going to pick an area. And most students who pick the area are usually pick the town they're in, because it also makes them aware of what's going on in your own town. I've had many, many students go, I didn't know we had this, and I've lived here all my life in the town. So you're going to do some, a lot of investigating on your town. So it's not like you're going to have to go across Connecticut. You know, you could do it right out in your own town. And again, I will show you how to get resources in your own town itself to do that. So again, that's what should be in your first journal. 
and possibly starting the research to look up some of the articles relating to your project or your passion that you want to do. Okay? And Dr. Harris had a couple of things with the journals. Don't be concerned or challenged when we offer other questions is to, to help guide you and narrow you. It's like, is that what you really want to do, if that's really what you want to do? Or we might say, well, that's a tough area. So if you need to, you know, when we provide those kind of comments, it's like maybe, you know, I might provide two or three suggestions. It's not telling you to change your thoughts or change what you want to pursue, but we are trying to make this the easiest, mm -hmm. seamless project. This whole thing is the project throughout the whole semester. And, and we might, when we write those questions, we might make you think a little different. Oh yeah, I never thought about looking at it this way. You know, that yeah, it's going to be easier if I look at it this way or something like that. Because like I said, we've been doing it for a while, we've seen a lot of projects, been there, done that type of thing. And the other thing is, and Professor Mori has done a wonderful job that when she's talking about populations, these assignments align very closely with the content that she's covering throughout the course. So she's not going to tell you about the windshield survey, which is due, I forget, which yes. halfway through. You're going to have a discussion about that with your assigned readings and your discussions with Professor Mori and that. So you're going to be exposed to the content that we are asking of you along the way. So anybody have any questions on the journal? Why we have journals? And, Next. Oh. Oh, and if they're not on time... Unfortunately, yeah. because. In order for us to give feedback so you're ready and, and I'll, could start, you know, the next two weeks with the next step of the project, we need to get all those journals on time. Five points for every day off. And that's with all the assignments. Okay. So this week we have a journal. Sunday night. And basically answer those three questions. P project, who your population is, and where. Those three things should be in your first journal starting. Yep, there you go. Those three, that's only three. It's right there in your week two, week two. And every week it's due, you'll see there's a thing that will say journal number one, journal number two, journal number three. You know, it's every two weeks. Next comes your windshield survey. I think that's due week five. What the windshield? Now you already have an area that you're going to do. And windshield surveys are almost universal in any public and community. Because, or is anybody here a community nurse? Okay. Because one of the first things, even a visiting nurse and everything will go, when she goes out there into the, what I call the field, what is she looking at? What kind of neighborhood this is? What's available for this patient? Because again, when you're a community nurse, public health nurse, you no longer have that patient in a controlled environment in the hospital. You now have a patient client that's outside in their own home. You are the guest. So you got to make things, you got to use your critical thinking ability to how can I get this patient, this population, this family to their optimal level of wellness with what means they have. Okay, so that's what you have to, you know, think about. So when you go out into that windshield area, windshield survey, you're going to look a lot. What kind of housing is there? Are they in? And if you notice in the syllabus, there are guidelines that Page should five. be in that should be mentioned in your uh, PowerPoint slides, because you're going to do a PowerPoint with audio. And if anybody doesn't know how to do audio, please contact me. We could show you. All right, I can show you. It's really not hard. If you have Microsoft PowerPoint, it's so simple. But, um, you know, so you're going to look around. You're going to look at what's available. Is it a town that has a hospital? Is it a town that has any type of medical resources? Because again, if somebody with heart disease now has a heart attack, how fast can the ambulance get it? Is it a volunteer ambulance? Where the people are notified, they gotta leave their homes, go to get the ambulance and go get you, versus like East Hartford that has somebody on call all the time for their ambulance. So call comes in, boom, they're right in their ambulance and out they go. You know, fire department, all those types of things. Now, if you go 
to for all this information, city.data.com. It will come up with a blank part and you could add what town you're doing. So right now I live in Stafford Springs, so if I put Stafford Springs, Connecticut, it will give me a lot of all the census material regarding the demographics of the town. Male, female, race, uh, housing, uh, mean income of the families in that town. How many families are three families, four families, all this time. I mean, it is a load of information. I mean, it, it, it kind of takes, I mean, you could take half an hour just going through all the information. There. But that's where you're going to find a lot of your demographics to fill out on one of the slides to answer one of the questions regarding that we asked you for the PowerPoint. And it usually it's what is in there is the most recent data. It may not be current to 2017. No, it no, might no. be 2010. We're not expecting you to try to go out and get what is mm -hmm. going on with right. the demographics because, you know, they base a lot of that off of the census report. Right. And sometimes if you're doing it on a specific individual town, you can put your own towns in, in the website. And because every single town, because they get aid from the government, from the state government and the federal government, that they have to produce every year a report of the town. It'll even tell you, the report will even tell you how many times the fire department went out, how many times an ambulance was out, you know, how many deaths were in the town. So you could plug in your own town too, or the, you know, like the area of the town. If you're doing a section, you can put it in the Frog Hollow section and it'll come up with all the demographics. And again, this is where if you're stuck, you know. So then you're going to put that PowerPoint. You're going to go out, you're going to take the pictures, you know, what is, you know, What's the housing look like? Are there parks and recreations? Because especially if somebody's doing obesity or something, where do kids go to run around? Especially in the summertime when there's no school. I know you, school's in session now, but even after school, where can kids run around? Where can kids go on the weekends to play? You know, do they have that accessibility? Otherwise, they're home doing, you know, whatever on the TV or so, you know? So again, Look at that, look at the road, look at the lighting, what's the noise level, uh, where's the grocery stores? I know when I used to live in Tallinn, one of the biggest things was the senior citizen center was in, or the housing was in the center of town, but there was the closest uh, grocery store was Big Y, but in, there was no sidewalks for them to walk. It was probably maybe a mile away. There was no sidewalks to walk. They had to cross over Interstate 84, exit 6195, which is the route to Yukon. So you can tell it was very busy and stuff. So how do these people, safety-wise, can get across to get to the grocery store? You know, or you know, do they know about Peapod for Stop and Shop or you know, these types? And that could even be some of your projects. And I'll talk more about that in projects. But you know, so what? Is the area looking? What can be a safety hazard? What could be something that relates to your project? All these things are going to relate. So if you notice in the last uh, part of what I give you for the guidelines, it says for you to relate what your project is for this town. So again, you need to, you know, say that this is relating, you know, what my project is and how it relates to the pictures you were showing. I'll, I'll give an example. A student was concerned about her community for the safety of the elderly. And she pointed out that she noticed the sidewalks were uneven and that the lighting was poor. But then when she started early development, the only thing that she said was that they needed to be educated. And it's like, but what about the sidewalks and the lighting, which were the two focal point from her? Mm -hmm. You know, we she figured it out. You know, mm -hmm. we did it. But that's the kind of thing when you're doing your your windshield survey, mm -hmm. you're thinking about how does this affect my population? Mm -hmm. How does this affect what I have to do? Oh, it's just click on it again. Excuse me. <laughs> 
Um, so, so it's that it's a building block, but we're keeping everything narrow. I had one student that first he was talking about smoking. And then he did his windshield survey and found out that HIV, no, HIV drug abuse was a problem. And it's like my question back to him is like, do you want to do smoking or do you want to do opioid abuse? Because he had already started his research, so he narrowed it back down to smoking. Because sometimes your eyes get so big, you just want to tackle everything. Keep, yeah. keep well, this well, nugget. And even if it's not a passion for the rest of your life, it can be a passion for this. Well, one of my students the last semester had done a, a, a project because she was waiting at the bus stop with her young children. And she noticed kids that were riding bikes to school were without helmets and things like that. And there were no sidewalks, no anything. So she actually went to the school and actually said, wait a minute, what's going on? How many injuries do you have with kids coming in, you know, in the morning to school that have fallen off their bikes, they're injured, whatever. And she actually was able to continue her project at the school system, because this year, at the beginning of the school system, she was giving a little presentation about using, getting uh, helmets and everything else like this. So she actually was able to fulfill her project. We're not asking you to that you have to do that. But can you see how little it doesn't have to be huge? And it was just in her neighborhood because she was concerned for even for her own children. In the summertime when they ride around without uh, pads or helmets and stuff, you know, it could be a problem. It's a safety issue for children. So we're not asking you for multiple projects. Um, any questions on the windshield survey? Okay. Next we're gonna do the interviews of a community stakeholder. My one question, who are stakeholders? Are you a stakeholder right now? You're a student here, right? You're the stakeholders that say you better give me a good education. No. <laughs> right? You're here. You want to make sure that you're learning what you properly learn and everything. Why do we have accreditation? Stakeholders are people that are vested in possibly what your topic you're doing. What we ask you is to interview one nurse. One, it's going to be two people you're going to interview. One is going to be a nurse. And it can't be a nurse that's in acute care setting or anything like that. It has to be a community nurse. And community nurses, who are community nurses? School nurses, parish nursing, uh, industrial nursing, uh, nurses that work in outpatient clinics, home. home care, visiting nurse, you know, somebody in the public. If you have a local health department in your area, in your town, or the area you're going to work in. They might. They, all health departments do not have a nurse. But you might call there and see if they have a nurse. Or a nurse that covers a tangent of towns. Right. Well, you would want to see, you know, who is your uh, health district, your health department district. Like when I lived in Tallinn, Willimantic was my health department in there. So again, and we'll go through that because one of my, uh, there's a video about Barbara Dingfellow, who used to be a public health nurse. She will, she has a map that shows you the health districts and everything as we get through the course. So again, but again, problems with that call us, okay? We have some connections, but again, we don't know everything and all the projects you're all going to do. You know, so we could maybe steer you. The second interview person you're going to do is some, a stakeholder somehow related to your topic, in your project that you want. It could be if you're going to do somebody with heart disease, you might an elderly, you might do an elderly person with heart disease. Because again, who better than to know what their needs are than somebody who has that condition? Okay, it might be a pediatrician if you're working with a population of adolescents or children. It could be um, a social worker. It could be the bus driver. Bus driver, um, like this one that did the school system with the bus. She interviewed the principal of the school because they are a stakeholder for these kids coming in her to school. You know, so they're a stakeholder. So again, people that you can relate this topic to. I start you off with questions, but those are only beginning questions to get you going for communication. And I know, did everybody graduate Goodwin here? Okay, so I know Ed taught you communication. I used to teach. But uh, how does communication, right? If somebody gives you an answer and you're not sure, 
ask another question to clarify that. You know, we all are good interviewers at the bedside, right? Now you're going to be good interviewers for at the outside. So, you know, you, part of that onus is going to be on you to get a better understanding of where they're coming regarding this. And if you already have a project in mind and everything, you might, you know, end up with questions like, well, what do you think about doing something like this, this project? And get their feedback from it and see what they think about. Is it possible? Stakeholders could be your politicians that are involved in this. Because sometimes maybe what you're thinking about might need some type of legislature involved. Somebody who can give you financial backing. Because even if you try to make up a pamphlet, who's going to pay for all the, pam the paper and the printing and all that? So it will be stakeholders that will be invested into this topic, into this project. Any questions there on those interviewers? And again, you can do it over the phone too. Because I know sometimes it's hard to get these to set a time for these because they're very busy. But basically, you could almost do an interview in 20 minutes with getting a good pull of something. So then your paper on here, again, there's not going to be any, I'm not going to ask for any, it's going to be APA, but no references. But know how to reference personal communication in your paper. Because in APA, personal communication does not go on the reference page. It goes in where you're writing, in the, in the body of the paper. OK? So then it comes to our final project. Any more questions on interviewers? I don't know why I have like, such a mental block. I apologize. But uh, let's say I'm into alcoholism, mm -hmm. middle-aged men. Let's just Mm -hmm. Yeah. Throw that out there, right? Good. Who who am I calling? Like, what do I do? go to a triple A a double uh, triple A meeting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A AA meeting. Talk to somebody who runs an AA. Like in my town, whatever yeah. there isn't one in my town, but but I'm doing. If that. you scroll, Alcoholic Anonymous yeah. in Connecticut, uh -huh. it'll come up with a tab of different towns, and you can see where the meetings are, the times of the meetings, everything. The only thing with that is they will have where it says open or private, you'll want to look for the ones that are open. But you can go to an AA meeting, you can go to an outpatient clinic, uh, you can um, Middletown has detox a huge, center. Huge um, detox and, and also you know AA and all that. Mm -hmm. Narcotics Anonymous. But then how would my windshield project relate to that interview? Where are most of all the alcoholics are? How many cars are there in the town or the area that you're doing? I've got plenty of cars in my town, but I, I mean. Well, okay. but it, that's an open book for you know, somebody who's an alcoholic to walk into any bar and everything, too, you know? Mm -hmm. So it gives me a picture like, okay, I can see why alcoholism is the problem in this town because. Or the employment, five, unemployment in your town, how many factories, what level of profession are they, yeah. uh, divorce, anything that would be a, a trigger for that, is it on the periphery, you know, so we'll get you through mm -hmm. those kinds of questions, you know, but uh, again, it's like you're going to think even if personal history having to do with that, you could even social workers, outpatient, you know, case coordinators from the hospital, mm -hmm. when they, where do they refer them to? You know, if they're coming off of detox, what rehab facilities are available for them to go through the 30, pay, mm -hmm. the 30 days of rehab? Right. And note too, if, and this is off of alcoholism, but go to the association, American Lung Association, American Heart Association, Red Cross if you're doing anything in those types of things interview somebody there. I mean, that's their daily, you know, work and everything. They are really up to date about a lot of that stuff, too, that they can tell you for the state of Connecticut or that, you know, town or that area. And again, if you get stuck, give us a call. Let us know. But can, can that help answer? Okay. Make it a little easier? Yeah, I just, like I said, it's, it's almost like you almost have to back into it to make sure that you nail the passion, like, uh, because as you you just pay something and then start patrolling and then you come off. Well, that's why you heard that, yeah, yeah. you can change in the middle, but you're going to have to do a lot of catch-up work. You know, will you, if you decide to change after your interviews, I really don't suggest it. 
if you're going to change, better to change after your windshield survey, because you could still do the town, but change the topic. Mm -hmm. I think once you get to the interviews, the hard. only thing that I have found after the interviews is a possibly a redirection of the project. It, it's been said, well, this has already been done in the town, but this little piece of it has not. You're not expected to recreate the wheel, and even if it has been done, you can still present it, uh, but it might just narrow down your focus even more. That would be the biggest change that I would see. Right. And again, that would be one-on-one -on -one with us that would help you with if you decide to ever do that. You know, uh, I don't personally. I don't want to see on journal three that oh, I'm deciding to change my child because this is what I'm going to do. You know, try to call me first because maybe we could help you still say the same topic but look at it differently. Because we don't want you to do a tremendous amount of work. You know. Um, Again, the interviews, it might put out, those who are a little shy might put them out at a comfort level to interview, but, you know, we're nurses too. We work with people. We have to learn how to interview. Again. So then, the last part of this whole project is your, inter, your health intervention paper. Now, this is going to summarize all this. So, we are going to come up with, after looking at your area, looking at the population and the research that you've done with articles and everything on this topic, what your interview people have said. So you can start your paper with the first couple of pages, do, giving a little synopsis of the last couple of things. Then you're going to come up with a very simple project. Um, like I said, one of my students, the student with the helmets, her project was actually setting up when she could go in with the school, when she could do uh, an educational seminar on helmets, and then she developed a little, like a trifold paper. Your project might be that little trifold paper to do. Um, I've had other students that um, they were working on healthy snacks for kids. So they came out with a little menu. Another set of students who were concerned with diabetes actually went to a couple of their grocery stores, looked at where the foods were, and kind of made a menu out on a little, again, a trifold paper, little menu on what they can do because we all know where's the most expensive foods and everything out for diabetics, you know, in the grocery store. So she helped that that they could give out. And then you would have to think, where could I put this? You know, could it go in the town hall? Could it go to doctors? Or could seniors, you know, depending on your topic, you know. So you're going to come up on your own, not using anybody else's or any projects that have already been out there and tried. Um, to do, a, come up with your own project. Small. Small, definitely. It's not huge, you know. And then you're going to look at the guidelines because anytime, even if you set up a seminar, where is it going to be held? So if I'm doing senior citizens, I don't think I'm going to do like a little educational seminar at eight o'clock at night because most elderly people go to bed <laughs> earlier, you know. So I might have to set it up with some place that I could use in the middle of the afternoon or something. Then I have to think of transportation. How will these elderly get there? You know, can I work with somebody, you know, dial a ride or something that could go to maybe the senior center or the um, senior living housing to pick up these people to bring them to the senior center to listen to this, you know, or to the town hall to listen, you know, and then who do I go to the town hall to make sure I can have this arrangement? You know, so you're going to think of all those things to be able to carry out your project. So, but it should all relate everything you've done it should be something you're not totally recreating new. anything new yeah. you're just taking your research your exploration through your assessment your in the information from your interview and you're just pulling it all together mm -hmm. and putting a pretty bow on it with mm -hmm. your project and a lot of times when you do your interview especially if you do somebody you know who's really into it like even the person with the disease they'll tell you what they need and maybe how they can do it I've had other people, now we're coming up to winter time, people, you know, well, we've just had all the hurricanes too. How do people who are home bound on oxygen live by themselves when the power goes out, who do they call? Who can get them, like in, if it's the floods, to pick them up because they can't drive? So a couple of students in the past have made out a list of the numbers to call because even they, they always say, well, it's on the website. 
Well, then she made out a nice little trifold, and she said she ended up sticking it to the, um, the doctor's office. Plus, then most communities will have their own little newspaper. She put it in the newspaper, you know, had them publish it. And a lot of the publishers ended up for free because it's, it's community based, you know. So that, you know, and access. Then we have community channels. Most of us have a community TV channel. You know, put it on something like that. So, but there's where your critical thing, where your thinking has to go for your project. You know, do you have to carry it out? Does it have to go on TV or no? no. But I want you to think about that. You know, where would you go to help alleviate possibly the situation within your town or within the area you're doing it at? Okay, does that really kind of help them? Bring it down, thinking it's a little more easier? And again, you're going to keep record. And um, let me just fill this, and then I'm going to go and talk about indirect and direct dollars. Okay? Um, like I said, you have two exams. You know, uh, week eight and fifteen. During those weeks, there will not be discussion board. Usually, during weeks that a paper's due, there's no discussion board. But I'll, I'll usually read my announcement. Please, 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 get in the habit of reading announcements. Because that's the only way I can communicate with you to, in a general broad sense. Instead of calling each of you, I want to call 21 calls. Okay? The other thing is, I think some of you have already done some of this cultural training online through the AD program. Okay. What you need to do then, if you haven't done it, take this website, go right on. They're going to ask you for uh, an ID and a password. There are three mods that you're going to do. Overall, it says it takes nine hours. A lot of students have done I, I've even taken it. It hasn't taken me nine hours. So you, and you can go in and you can go out. You don't have to do it all at one city. So you could open it up today, work on it for half an hour, go next week and open. That's why you have the password, the idea and the password. Um, I believe it's due week eight, two. Um, so if it's not nine hours already. It might Whatever you. Three hours, six hours. It's all on your own how to do it. You, you okay. can do it. Okay. You know, and like I said, it doesn't have to be all at once. Okay. So if I have a half hour that I'm free, okay, I'm going to go on and do what I can. And it you know, gives you a little thing about culture and everything. And the reason that this is in, because if you noticed at the beginning, in order to graduate program, this is universal across colleges, you, we have to show a course in the program is multicultural. Week eight. Week eight. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought during the exam. But you can start it now. You, and if you finish it next week, send it in to me. Because what you're going to do at the end, you're going to get a certificate because you're going to get CEUs too. So put CEUs into your portfolio because this looks good for jobs or during your evaluation period that you've done. Because this is a federal site. This is from the uh, health, uh, health and Human Services. So it's a national type of thing for culturally competency. Um, so you'll get CEUs and it's going to show you that. All you then have to do is print out, you know, not even print out, save the uh, certificate that you get after completing these three mods, put it onto a Word document, and then just email it to me. And that's 5% of your grade right there. Okay? Um, it's not hard. There's a pretest and a post test. I'll tell you the pretest and the post test questions are the same. <laughs> You know, but go on to that, and it meets that requirement for your graduation. That you've done a multicultural type of uh, course throughout your program. Because if you didn't, you couldn't graduate. Either. Okay? Discussion board. I know I put 14 weeks, but there will be weeks that I will take off. You know, like I said, exams, you don't have it. Week 15, um, things are due, usually I take off. Week eight, you've got enough between the exam and do, doing handing in the culturally competent. But again, if you can do the culturally competent before that in your time. Okay? You, if your kids play baseball, take your laptop and do it then. <laughs> you know, those types of you know, baseball's not it, it's football now. But anyways, so discussion board, I think you're all familiar with discussion board. I don't need to. I try to correct them on Mondays, but I, depending on what's happening in my life sometimes. But I usually try to get them done by Wednesday. And I always pose kind of another kind of part to the question, like on Wednesdays, to get through, you know. I'll try to answer some. 
but you know, usually another kind of section. So if you kind of look at by Wednesday, usually I'll try to point because if you notice today, if you went on discussion board, there's another little, there's actually a, a, a little article for you to read, a cultural thing um, that I posted, and for you just to respond back to me. Okay, that is basically the course. So then you'll notice too, as we go through, there's guidelines to every single uh, assignment, and there's the rubrics. You know, and I'm not going to go through all that, okay? Unless there's a is there a question? Okay. So what I want to do then? Oh, can I just say in reference to the guidelines oh, okay. and the rubrics, Professor Mori um, will often put up some very helpful um, examples. Oh, the windshield surveys. The windshield yeah. surveys. Please follow the guidelines that she provides in the syllabus for the required information and make sure that your topic and that aligns with the information you're sharing about your uh, paper. So that's all I'm going to say for the moment. One. Do this. Why can't I? You gotta click the little blue. Little blue line. Yeah. This one? Oh, there we go. Thank you. No, 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 I was in the course, but yeah. I want to get to little, weekly units. Yep, it should be within that little slim blue line. You have to like drag it over. Yeah. The other way. I know. See the arrow? Yeah. Midway. Oh, arrow. okay. Yeah. Just tap. Does it click? Touch the arrow. Just tap. Yeah. <laughs> maybe with the maybe with the mouse. Can you do it with the mouse? Does it work? <laughs> if you click in there, because it does it on the computer too. There, you there go. there's the arrow. Oh, okay. there. Thank you. I guess it doesn't like my fingers. Uh, okay. Can, I'm sorry, guys. This is so hard to read on here. But direct and indirect hours. Direct hours. We want you to have at least 25 hours of direct contact. This is the interviews. This is going out, taking pictures of your town. This is going to maybe any group meetings on Gardy, like if somebody wanted to do an AA meeting. That's direct hours. Um, any type of uh, shadowing somebody. So say you've got the ability to shadow a nurse going out to homes on people that have diabetes or heart disease or whatever. You know, even if it's only for a couple hours. You know, because I know you all have friends and nurses that are different areas of nursing. Yeah. That's, my, that's my issue. I yeah. don't know anyone. Okay, well, we, can, we can even set you up. Okay. We, we, you know us. Yeah, we have, we have sources. <laughs> but like I, I said, unless I know your topic. Hold on to our hands. We'll pull yeah, you we'll, through. We'll get, you, we'll get you through. Yes. We'll give you resources that are we know who are willing to talk to students. Okay. I think too. So, you know. So, you know, shadowing anybody. Um, you know, indirect hours are your researching, your Healthy People 22 topic. You know, how long you're doing, reading your articles, writing up your papers, um, preparing the PowerPoint slides. Okay, that should be no more than 20 hours. Because we want you to get a little more out into the community type of thing. So again, you know, those are indirect. If you have a question about what is indirect or direct, call us. We'll tell you where to put it. You know? But that's where we have to show, again, it deals with our accreditation, that you are actually doing some type of clinical hours outside than just sitting in front of the computer. But, you know, again, you get stuck on where to put this, email us, call us, whatever. You know, we're there to help you. We know this is the first time you're actually doing an independent clinical. That's what this is. It's an independent clinical because you can do it on your own time. And there's no set facility that you need to go to. You know, it's not like every Tuesdays I'm at St. Francis from 7 to 4, you know, type of thing. You know, we're all nurses. We're all able to go out and do things. Gives you a different aspect of what healthcare is. 
than the actual inpatient because I always say as acute care nurses we can give excellent discharge instructions. <laughs> we can give excellent discharge. But you know what? They get home into their own home environment, it's a whole nother world. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it sometimes even with your own family. She tells me to do this, I'm not gonna do that. Doctor maybe say take this, I'm not gonna take this, I'm not gonna do this. you know, I do thing. You know, so it's a whole different world. You are the guest in them and you have to use what resources they have to make them get to their optimal level of wellness. So that's the course. Does anybody have any questions? Has, does this help a little bit coming here yes. and having yes. this? Yes. You know, because that's why I, I kind of put it, and hopefully this will get on tape onto the course. Um, you can shut it up. Okay. Where's the button?